couple of days away from the start of the new school year, and that can mean the start of sniffles, maybe coughs, or maybe worse. So, Dr. Doreen Uyoko from Kaiser joining us with more. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, first things first, I, we got to remind people because it's easy to forget sometimes. Um, the difference between the cold and the flu. There are certain things you can look out for that can give you the telltale signs. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's not always very easy for us to tell either in the office because a cold can be a cold can be severe, a flu can be mild. So right. we're mostly looking for a flu to show signs of a higher fever, uh, more severe headache and loss of energy, worse cough, and um, the telltale body aches. Headache yeah. and body aches are much more prominent for the flu. Okay, and I, and I think sometimes people will think, well, well, you hear so much about antibiotics these days that it's just kind of the cure-all for everything, but it mm -hmm. actually is not going to work in this case. No, so I think I think over time people are more educated about viruses versus flu, but uh, viruses versus um, bacteria. But mm -hmm. it's very important to know that they're different. And antibiotics just treat bacteria. There are some antivirals, but by and large we don't use antivirals, mm -hmm. except for in the case of flu because it can cause more severe illness and complications. Uh, antibiotics, however, would work for a strep, which oftentimes you see in, yep. student, in yep. students. For strep and also complications of viral illnesses like bacterial ear infections, sinus infections, and pneumonia. So let's talk about some of the other things that uh, parents should be mindful of and also students too. We hear about UKUs, you know, things like that. What else yeah. are you seeing throughout the school year that uh, they should be aware of? So kids are around their peers and there's always going to be exposures you have no idea um, about. However, you're watching your kids for itchy heads, itchy bottoms, skin rashes, or skin sores. I've gotten a pink eye before when yeah. I was in college. Oh, that is not fun. Yep. So pink eye is very, very common when kids are back to school and there's um, some irritant factors but also infections, viruses, or bacteria. So it's easily spread by hand washing but if your child does have an itchy red eye, you can use over-the-counter medicines for itch and redness but if you see yellow discharge, then you need to call your child's doctor. Yeah, I got to admit, it gets a little gross, so <laughs> you don't want to get that one. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about some of the vaccines. Lot, uh, we can't get to all of it, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of vaccines for different age groups, too. Mm -hmm. So when kids are back to school, um, mostly we're trying to see them for their well care and update their routine vaccinations. We remind families about uh, annual flu shot is recommended. And then at um, the preteen ages of 11 and 12 or so, we try to see kids back and talk about updating their tetanus and pertussis mm -hmm. vaccinations. But there's also a meningitis prevention and um, HPV or human papillomavirus All vaccine right. that we endorse. Well, lots to keep an eye on. Uh, Dr. Ueoka, thanks so much for joining us. You know, Kaiser and other uh, medical facilities, plenty of information about that. Thank you so much. And eat breakfast. She said that's important. Stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, doctor.